Ladies and gentlemen, John Stewart. Thank you very much, Mr. President, Mrs. Clinton, Vice President and Mrs. Gore, White House correspondents, distinguished guests. Uh, before I begin, I know there's a lot of important people here, uh, but I've been sitting up here for about three hours. Uh, so if you just excuse me, I have to check on, on just one quick thing. Uh, Mom, good table? Where, how was the fish? Dry? Good portion? Thank you for being here. She uh, was very excited to be here. I was a little nervous about taking this gig for uh, what reason I do not know, but um, she put it all in perspective by saying, when in your lifetime do you think you'll ever get the opportunity to meet or even really eat in the same room as the Carl Lubsdorf? So, uh, They told me that name would work. I really don't know who he is. Uh, which I imagine is about, Carl, hey you. Carl, I know you're thinking the same thing about me too, so. I'm really, I'm not very familiar about how things operate in Washington. Uh, I don't know the protocol of these dinners. I, I got some advice from Washington insiders to sort of help me along with uh, uh, how my speech was supposed to go. Uh, Senator Moynihan said, uh, make the speech bipartisan. Don't offend. <laughs> Senator Lott said, be concise. And Senator Byrd said, no dogs. <laughs> Apparently that guy just really hates dogs. I, uh... <laughs> Rosie O'Donnell was the president's first choice uh, to be here this evening and uh, she withdrew, uh, citing a nasty and brutal confirmation process. Um... <laughs> I wasn't even the second choice. Dennis Miller was the second choice, but uh, he got hung out by an illegal nanny technicality. Um, <laughs> but isn't that what the confirmation process is all about here in Washington? Weeding out the truly qualified to get to the truly available. <laughs> One more like that and I might get to go to the Vanity Fair party. Um, are you guys going to that? That's a tough ticket, boy. Good luck. Uh, I was confirmed, I, I, uh, I don't know if you read about it last week, but I uh, went before the Joint Select Committee on mandatory dinners at the Hilton and uh, I have the transcripts, uh, oddly enough. The transcripts from my confirmation hearing. Hmm. I really don't do any impressions, but uh, I'll do my best to, to dramatize uh, the spirit of what went on in my hearing. Um, Senator Helms. Mr. Stewart, are you now or have you ever been a card-carrying member of the Don Imus fan club? Mr. Stewart, uh, not card-carrying, no, thank you. Senator Byrd. Mr. Stewart, were you aware that during the Peloponnesian War, <laughs> dogs were utilized mainly as weapons? No, I, I didn't know that. Are you sure you don't have a dog? Yes. Have you ever caught a frisbee in your mouth? No, I, I have not. I don't know why he sounds like Charlton Heston, but uh, that's as good as I go. <laughs> Senator Kennedy. <laughs> Mr. Stewart, can you tell this committee the difference between a Rob Roy and a Manhattan? Sugar and crushed fruit in the glass? I vote to confirm. <laughs> I know. I know that's an obligatory joke, to be honest with you, I love Senator Kennedy, I think that guy's the coolest, uh, although, 
I, I do think he has kind of an enormous head. Um, <laughs> honestly, it doesn't even look like a head. It looks more like a container for a head. <laughs> it's just an observation. Congressman Patrick Kennedy. Well, they're giving him a shot on the uh, Joint Select Committee. Congressman Patrick Kennedy. Mr. Stewart, do you like video games? <laughs> Not really. Senator Thurman. <laughs> Mr. Stewart, do you like cheese? I do. <laughs> and finally, Congressman DeLay, does the distinguished comedian from New York want a piece of me? <laughs> huh? Punk? <laughs> but I am very happy to be here, and, and let me just say this is the nicest Seder I've ever been to. <laughs> Today is, for my people, the Jewish people, the sixth night of the holiday Passover, uh, or as Pat Buchanan refers to it, uh, Saturday. Um, I believe that's true. Oh, hey. oh my God, that, uh, that actually reminds me, I apologize, I have a, a, an announcement to make. Uh, due to a scheduling conflict with a local convention, the Albright Bas Mitzvah will now be held in the Coolidge Room. <laughs> Congratulations, uh, Miss Albright. She's Jewish now. Just trying to welcome her to the team. I think it's great. Uh, Miss Albright can, can find out about her Jewish heritage, and it doesn't really drastically change her life. Uh, she can go on with her work and, and, and doing the things she did. Uh, whereas when Ralph Reed found out he was Jewish, he had to quit his job. So that was, uh, that was really tough. didn't fly where he works. I don't, uh... Mr. Reed did quit the Christian Coalition, but Pat Robertson says the split is amicable, and in fact wishes Ralph, quote, muzzle tough. <laughs> Although Pat's a little annoyed, he has to change the name of his show to the 699 Club. <laughs> Sorry, is that, isn't that McCurry's job? <laughs> I have an announcement uh, right here. Thank you very much, uh, Terry. Oh, wow. Pierre Salinger has just announced <laughs> he has definitive proof that tonight's coffee has been replaced by Folger's crystals. <laughs> Apparently he has videotape and chat room transcripts. He says it's all going to be in his new book, If You Knew What I Knew, It Would Curl Your Eyebrows. <laughs> to Washington books, by the way. What is the whole thing now on the new tell-all insider books? Whatever happened to the old-style Washington books of substance? Profiles and courage. What I think. Now we've got, help me, I'm locked in the cabinet. Oh, behind the Oval Office. <laughs> Although behind the Oval Office uh, uh, is a better title than the first title he was going to use. Uh, my name is Dick M. and I'm a sexaholic. So... <laughs> Guess I'm not going to that party after all, huh? Uh, speaking of uh, uh, Mazel Tov here, there are congratulations in order. Apparently in marriage, uh, Mr. Greenspan and Andrea Mitchell uh, were married. That's uh, excellent news. Ms. Mitchell, you must be thrilled. Uh, I mean, in the drab workaday world of journalism, how can you not be swept off your feet by the electrifying charisma of a veteran economist? <laughs> Probably had you from those three romantic words, I fight inflation. <laughs> I kid Mr. Greenspan, of course, because I have no investments. <laughs> Honestly, I am at your mercy. Please don't raise interest rates. I'm not kidding. I'm trying to buy an apartment in New York, and I'm, I'm at your mercy until Mr. Dole approves my loan. Um,
Speaker Gingrich uh, did get a loan from uh, uh, Mr. Dole, three hundred thousand dollars. They say he got a sweetheart deal, but uh, I think he ought to make prompt payments on that. Mr. Dole seems like a pretty tough customer, and I think one guy here on crutches is enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dole is trying to actually uh, change his image from the very gruff one to a more grandfatherly one. Uh, apparently the $300,000 uh, $300, he lent Mr. Gingrich uh, came enclosed in a birthday card, which I thought was really sweet. Can you have that uh, replace and delete thing? Can I uh, <laughs> F2 that joke? Is Mr. G Speaker Gingrich is not even here, is he? Is it? I think this might be his weekend to house sit leader. <laughs> He's back. Celebrities here this evening. Uh, uh, it's a tradition of the association dinners that actually began. I did some research. Uh, began at the first dinner in 1921 when Mary Pickford uh, came as a guest of John McLaughlin, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, Ellen DeGeneres is here, a very big celebrity. Uh, I keep. Uh, I commend her uh, courage, actually, in, in coming out uh, with her sexuality, uh, at much personal risk, I might add. Uh, although I still believe it's an elaborate ruse to keep Larry King from hitting on her. But, um... <laughs> Sir? <laughs> well, apparently he's a flirt. I watch ESPN, I have no idea. I did see uh, Ellen's interview with Diane Sawyer, and uh, uh, it was last night, and I thought it was really moving. Uh, and I thought this was really interesting. Uh, she said that her first experience in that um, uh, ilk realm, in, in that thing, uh, was at age 18 uh, with her best girlfriend. And uh, immediately following the interview, Dick Army introduced legislation banning same-sex friendships. <laughs> I blew that one, that was a good one too, yeah. But all these celebrities are surely a boon uh, for C-SPAN. I would bet tonight that they are almost sure to double their viewer. Um, even though we are preempting the regularly scheduled program, Blue Goose, the making of a podium. You know, we actually had something like C-SPAN where I used to work, um, only we called it a security camera. There we go. I like C-SPAN. It's, it's mesmerizing, kind of like the Yule Log. It's, uh... I'll tell you what, it isn't very exciting, but wait until high-definition TV hits. I have heard that if you watch C-SPAN on high-definition TV, it gives the illusion that Vice President Gore is three-dimensional. I cleared that. <laughs> there are a lot of big issues here uh, on the table here in Washington. Uh, uh, right now there's some debate in Congress about the FDR memorial. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but uh, there's some interest groups that are concerned with historical accuracy and they're lobbying Congress. Uh, some say FDR should not be in his wheelchair for the memorial. Some say he should be standing. Some say uh, uh, he should be having a cigarette. Some say not. Some say Eleanor's statue should not have uh, fur on it. Uh, so they actually did a poll in USA Today on Friday, uh, I guess to give Congress uh, sort of a feel for how regular Americans feel about that issue, and the results are really interesting. 8% felt uh, he should be in the wheelchair, 12% said he should be standing, and 80% said pass a budget. So, <laughs> I thought that was interesting. You gotta nip these people in the bud with the, with the statues and the interest and the whole thing. I've heard it's already spreading out of the Lincoln Memorial. Apparently, a group of historical purists are arguing about the historical accuracy of the Lincoln Memorial, complaining that Lincoln himself was neither 50 feet tall nor made of bronze. 
But Washington has always been a hotbed of social protest. Uh, I guess the biggest recent one was the Million Man March, or as uh, many of you probably remember it, that day we called in sick. <laughs> Anyway, Mr. President, uh, I'm sure this has been a very gratifying yet difficult year uh, for you. It's an honor for me to be here. Uh, I know Kenneth Starr is not here tonight. I think that guy's getting a little desperate. Yesterday he subpoenaed NASA to investigate why so much money is being spent on the Hubble telescope. <laughs> I was told if I go over my allotted time, the Peruvian hostage release team was going to come in here and take all you people out. <laughs> hey, you know what would be a good thing to get to? The end. Uh, as we approach the millennium, uh, I guess the real job of government is to watch out for all the lunacy that's been going on. The closer we get to the year 2000, the more lunatics seem to come out of the woodwork. And uh, I'll tell you, it's already happening. You know who really scared me? Uh, was that crazy cult leader from California, uh, Bob Dornan. Um, so thank you all very much for your time. This has been a great honor for me. Have a good night. Thank you.